Good morning. morning. See, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad for it. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are here in uh, person, and for those of you who are joining us virtually, uh, we ask God's blessings upon you. Uh, not only will you be taken out to a wonderful uh, meal at some point today, will you be lavished with love and joy and laughter. <laughs> Friends, indeed, we are thankful for God's presence with us this day. And as we have uh, begun to establish here, as we move forward to continuing to create a culture of hospitality, I want to invite you now to rise to your feet as you are comfortable and greet two or three of your neighbors with that word of affirmation. You are a blessing from God. You are a blessing from God. So good to see and to hear the great gift of warmth and hospitality extended to one another this day. Oop. I need to go take some of the sound off. You gotta love technology. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> We have a few announcements for your hearing this day, friends. We begin first with an announcement from Pastor B, uh, followed by an announcement from Debbie Tedrick, and then an announcement from Joan Pence. Good morning, friends. Um, I announced last week that um, we have opened our mission week to anyone who wants to join us. We will be working at Cass Community Social Services. Um, four days starting June 26th. So the 26th, 27th, 28th, and 29th, there will be day trips. We're not gonna spend the night. But if, if you would like to participate one or two or all of those days, please let me know. Um, youth and adults, we're looking forward to a great time of service and fellowship. So if you are interested in being part of that, please let me know. Thank you. And hello, everybody. Um, good morning, uh, and happy Father's Day, too. So we, um, we have some musical, musical offerings for you today. The handball choir is going to be doing something, and also the children's choir. And this will sort of be our last foray before we take a little hiatus and uh, have summer, you know, go on summer vacations and all that. And then we will reconvene in the fall um, uh, after Labor Day. So if you or someone you know or someone you'd like to volunteer for me would like to join the handball choir, the children's choir, uh, the chancel choir, or um, you know, do a soloist or do, uh, we're gonna add some praise and worship music and that too as much as we can for next season, please come and talk to me. And honestly, I would love to get to know you as well because some people I'm, I'm starting to get to know, I feel like I have my church family here, but there are many people that I, I still have yet to get to know. So I would love to go out with you. I'm a little bit freer now. So after church, I could, you know, we could go get some coffee or something like that, or we could meet before church or something like that. I'd love to just get to know you as people and as my church family, but also just get some ideas about some things you'd 
like to see. Um, you know, the theater, drama, you know, different things like that. We could do skits and all that. I have a lot of ideas that I'd like to implement next year, um, especially with the, the youth and the, the kids program and that. So if there's anything that, you know, you think is really cool or you just want to get to know me, I certainly would like to get to know you. So please uh, just, you know, find me after church and all that and we will exchange numbers and uh, go have coffee and have a little bit of fun but I just wanted to let you know that we've had a wonderful time this season putting things together for you and thank you so much for your words of encouragement and um, and you know joy with uh, trying to embrace you know all things and all different kinds of music we've had a lot of variety and I've been really happy about that and I'd like to continue that and keep expanding the scope of the offerings that we have so any ideas that you have are are very welcome and you will see us back I'll still be around and everything of course Yaroslav is going to be uh, here playing wonderful music for us I know yay Yaroslav thank you <laughs> so Yaroslav will still be here um, and so will I but it will be most uh, him in the summer. We'll have a few things, you know, going on, maybe a soloist here and there, that kind of thing. Um, but the choirs will be off until after Labor Day. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for embracing everything that we're doing, and I really appreciate that. So thank you so much. Testing. Hey. Hello. This is Emma. Emma's here to demonstrate that help at VBS can come in many sizes. So how many of you have one of these things? Hold them up. Don't hand one to anybody who doesn't have one. So Vacation Bible School is coming up. I guess you hadn't noticed that. Um, I need you to go rent me some children. Okay, because we got so much talent and so much wonderful help, and I am so appreciative of the people who have stepped forward um, to run dance. I can't put one foot in front of the other without hurting myself. Um, to do music, we have skits, all kinds of good things will be happening. And so what we just need to do is fill the audience with kiddos, and that's where you come, from, come in. So... If you could, you know, sign up a grandkid or a niece or a nephew, or you got little ones at home that we don't know about, um, we'll take them. So this last week in July, I'm glad you're paying attention. She laughed at that one. Um, <laughs> the last week of that's how you teach high school. You know, you you slide little jokes and they laugh. You know, they're paying attention. So um, last week of July from 9 to 11 right here in River City. We're back in our home church. I'm so excited about that. So um, please go to the website, 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 website. How do you get them to do this? What? Go to the what? Go to the what? Wait, we have a website? Who knew? Anyways, website. Okay, you edited for me, thank you. He does such nice work on slides. Anyways, you can find it under the events tab. You can register, thank you Bruce for that, um, and it's all electronic now, so it's wonderful. If you want to leave me some kind of note about something, that would be good too. If you want to volunteer, please let me know because we can always use extra hands to herd children and otherwise handle things. So, And appreciate your help. So what are we doing? Wait, what are we doing? What are we doing? When? From? Good job. Always a joy to have educators come and do announcements. <laughs> uh, friends, we are so grateful for all of our guests who are joining us this day. If you are a guest joining us in person, uh, you have a few different ways you can let us know that you are here. Certainly want to uh, just thank you for blessing us with your presence. You can do that in one of three ways. On the back of your bulletin, you will find a QR code. Simply scan that with the camera on your phone. It'll bring up the digital uh, connection card. Uh, we're not putting you on a mailing list. Simply just want to send you a word of welcome and appreciation for your blessing us with your presence here this day. Uh, if you want something a little bit more
more tactile, one of our ushers will give you a hard copy of that card. You can complete that, place it in one of the offering boxes uh, before you leave. Again, simply want to send you a more personal word of welcome and appreciation for your presence here with us. For those of you who are joining us virtually, friends, you will find pinned in the comment section our connection card. Simply click that link. It'll bring that up for you. Uh, again, fill that out. Want to just uh, offer you a more personal word of welcome to thank you for blessing us with your presence this day. Joys and concerns, friend, can be submitted all the way up until the very end of the sermon. If you are here in person, you can text that number that is on the screen. Those come directly to me. If you are joining us virtually, simply put those in the comment section, uh, and we'll lift those during our time of prayer. Uh, again, friends, the orange candles that are on the altar are a awareness for gun violence prevention. And so we are continuing to be mindful of the ways uh, that we can uh, stop the tide of violence uh, where guns are in place. Lastly, friends, uh, as we have announced before, we are uh, looking for a new head treasurer. We want to thank uh, Keith Miller for his years of service uh, to the church. We appreciate uh, what he has done in that transition from Michael uh, to Keith. And so we are in the transition now from uh, Keith to our next treasurer. If you are interested uh, in that, you can see myself, you can see Keith Miller, or you can see Doug Gress. In addition, we are looking for an additional uh, two members to our treasurer's team to be our check writers. Uh, we are thanking uh, Margie and Rick Shaw for their service in that capacity. Uh, they have stepped away. And again, we are looking not only for a new treasurer, but for uh, check writers. And again, there is some time sensitivity to that. We want to uh, have these positions filled by the beginning of September so that uh, those new persons have full opportunity to be immersed in all the things that are going on, especially the head treasurer, before we begin our budgeting process for 2024. With that, friends, we prepare ourselves to move forward into this time of worship. Our opening hymn, Leave It There, can be found 522 in the hymnal. Leave It There, 522 in the hymnal.
Good morning. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, creator of all things, we celebrate and honor the men of faith throughout their lives. We thank you for the men who have inspired us to try new things, overcoming obstacles, and challenge ourselves to do the best. We thank you for the husbands, fathers, grandfathers, uncles, brothers, and others who have shown us that character and integrity are invaluable. Almighty God, we give you praise and honor for providing us with men whose example has transformed and shaped us. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Amen. The scripture today should be familiar to a lot of people, but just in case, I'll read it. It's John 3, 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the Son of God. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. I'm going to pull an audible here. We're going to do the children's moment first. So I'm going to invite the children to join me up here. God loves me all the time. God loves me. All the time. God loves me. Come on, Reagan. It's okay, honey. Yep, come that way. There you go. There she is. Okay. So today's a special day we just talked about, right? It's Father's Day. And I've been trying to figure the best way to talk about that. So I was thinking about our Bible, right, and about the one we follow, Jesus, and I wondered if you know who Jesus' father is. What was Jesus' father's name? You know what Jesus' father's name was? Well, that's right. That his, yes, that's right. You're both right. Look at that. Um, his, his father was Joseph, and Often, often, Jesus talked about God being father to him. And as we just read, example, the, what he said about God as an example of what he should be. But I was also thinking about Joseph and what he did. He, made, he was a carpenter. We don't hear much about Joseph, but he was a carpenter. And he made things just like many people do, mothers and fathers. He built things, he built homes, he built all kinds of things as a carpenter, and that's pretty much all we know about him, except that he was a good man and took care of his family, as many fathers do. So I think it's important today to celebrate our fathers, right? And so I know you've probably already thought about gifts for your dads, right? But I'm going to invite you now to give them one more gift, a very special gift of music. That is an offering to all the fathers here and who are watching remotely. And I'm going to invite all the children who are watching remotely. This is a moment for you to stand up and sing wherever you are. Um, it's a song you'll know and most of the verses you'll know. So join us in singing um, about Jesus and God's love. Okay? There you go. Debbie, it's on you.
Grandma. As we prepare for our uh, hymn of preparation before uh, we bring forward our preacher for today, uh, just a word of introduction. Uh, as I mentioned on last week, I had uh, planned to be taking this week and next week uh, off for some vacation time. Um, and instead of uh, telling my friend and brother, uh, come back another time, uh, I get a chance to listen to him preach. I haven't listened to you preach in a long time, my friend, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we have with us the Reverend Dr. Gary A. Williams. Uh, his middle name is a profound, wonderful middle name. <laughs> uh, we have been friends for almost 22 years. I did the math on it. Yeah. <laughs> a phenomenal preacher, phenomenal leader uh, in God's church. We had the uh, great pleasure of being on staff together uh, and have had this wonderful friendship for uh, these last 22 years. And so after we have our next hymn, Blessed Quietness, uh, you will hear from my friend and God's messenger, the Reverend Dr. Gary A. Williams.
Good morning. I'd like to highlight a couple of verses, um, Genesis 1, 1 and 2, for a, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And then I'd like to share a passage from a letter of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 26 through 29. For we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. In the beginning, with the end in mind, let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this time. Thank you for my friend and brother, Anthony R. Hood. We pray that you continue to bless him, bless his family, bless this ministry, bless this church. Bless everyone and theirs who are under the sound of my voice. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my risen redeemer. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for this opportunity because I was here once uh, before and you guys invited me back. I'm told that's a good sign. Uh, but with the end in mind, when you write a paper, where do you begin? What do you think about? Where do you start? What do you want to accomplish? What light do you want to shed? What is your purpose? The beginning. The creation by James Weldon Johnson. And God stepped out on space. And he looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make me a world. As far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything. Blacker than a hundred midnights, down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled and the light broke. And darkness rolled up on one side and light stood shining on the other. God said, that's good. The God reached down, reached out and took the light in his hands and God rolled light around in his hands until he made the sun and he set the sun ablazing in the heavens and the light that was left from making the sun God gathered up into a shining ball and flung it against the darkness Spangling the night with moon and stars, then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world, and God said, that's good. Then God himself stepped down, and the sun was on his right hand, and the moon was on his left. The stars were cluttered about his head. The earth was under his feet, and God walked. And where he tried, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes and the lightning flashed. He clapped his hands and the thunder rolled. And the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. Then the green pasture sprouted and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his finger to the sky, and the oak spread out his arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the sea, and God smiled, and the rainbow appeared and curled itself around his shoulders. Then God raised God's arms, and he waved his hands over the sea and over the land, and he said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the swedes, Seas roamed the 
forest and the woods and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then he walked around and God looked around and all that he had made, he looked at his sun and he looked at his moon and he looked at his little stars. He looked on the world with all its living things and God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think. By a deep, wide river, he sat down with his head in his hands. God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay, and by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down, and there the great God Almighty who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand, this great God, like a mammy bending over a baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay, till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen? amen. Somebody said amen. amen. Do y'all say amen here, Dr. Hood? <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that God made me. You see, he made me in his image. God made me. The divine masculine, the divine feminine, God made me. I came here this morning to tell you one simple message, that God loves you. The Father, the Son, the Mother, the Holy Ghost, God loves you. Now, I could just take my seat. Some of y'all be happy, right? Get to rest around a little early. But since uh, we got a few minutes, I'll go ahead. Again, my message to you this morning is simple. And if we apply it, I believe that all of the underlying principles or situations, circumstances, conflicts, would be solved. And that's simply this. God loves me and that we are to love one another. It's that simple. Have you heard? It is written that you cannot love God if you cannot love your neighbor who you see there daily. He that loveth not, loveth knoweth not God, for God is love. You ever read that? God knew that we would be here this morning, Dr. Hood. I, 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 I'm really amazed. He knew that you and I would make this appointment. God made it so that right now, in this moment, that we all could fellowship together. So that we could learn from each other. So that we could praise them together. I don't know about you, but once I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. You see, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. The, the, the writer of this hymn was primarily inspired by the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, wherein the 12 disciples, when caught in the storm, see Jesus appearing to walk on water. In the account, St. Peter attempts to walk toward Jesus while in the water, but begins to seek. From this occurrence, the previous hymn was composed. I was seeking, but Jesus lifted me. So let me remind you that when we are seeking, when, when we are at our lowest, God continues to love us. God cares for us, and God is present with us. God allows us to work on God's behalf. God allows us to be God's hands and feet. God allows us to be present and to be help to others when they are in need, when we are in need. You know, the reality is sometimes we need to be needed. Sometimes we need to help somebody else for ourselves. 
So God wants us to love each other. Can we do that? Is it anybody in here that loves somebody in here? Well, why don't you just look at them and say, I love you. I love you. Now, now if that seems creepy to you, you could say, I love you in the name of Christ. <laughs> you see, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we are to love each other. Men are to love, women are to love, children are to love, we are to love, fathers are to love. Today is a day to show appreciation or thanks. It's interesting to take note of what one of the recorders of words said of a father. Michael, that's Marion Webster, a recorder of words. Marion Webster says a father is a male parent a man who has begotten a child, also a male animal that has sired an offspring. Further says a male parent, a man who has begotten a child. I am surprised at the dryness of this definition. You see, it seems to be without shape, without form. It has no breath or depth. It is rather a matter of fact, boring definition, just a function of biology. So maybe we need to dig, a, dig just a little deeper. Let's look at the definition of a parent. A parent is a caregiver of the offspring in their own species. In humans, a parent is the legal guardian of a child. Biological parents are the people whose gamete resulted in a child a male through the sperm and a female through the ovum. Biological parents are first degrees relatives and have 50% genetic meat. This is still a rather sterile definition, isn't it? Well, let me tell you what Stephen Kendrick says, a Christian author. He outlines seven roles that a father plays in the life of his family. Provider, protector, leader, teacher, helper, encourager, and friend. And my dad added another one, enforcer. <laughs> Albert was a kind father. He provided food, clothing, and shelter. He was a leader, a helper, encourager, and friend. He helped random people on the streets, he didn't just send his six sons to church, he took them. He didn't just tell them to pray, he taught them. Albert John taught, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's in a theological argument with someone one day, say, why in the world would they say I pray the Lord my soul to take. Why do you want to think about death when you die? And at that particular moment, I didn't have an answer. And in fact, I didn't get the answer until God placed it on my heart as I was preparing for this message. You, you, you see, what my father knew was that he was sharing that at the end, your fate doesn't lie with men Rather, your fate lies with God. At the end of what we call life, we will all meet our maker. So during the day, while we are awake, while we are alive, we need to live like one day there will be an end. When you live with the end in mind, you will live by the principles with which you confess. You will give grace for you have received grace. You will forgive for you have been forgiven. You will help others for you have been helped. When you live life with the end in mind, you can help strangers, you can see the good in others, and you can embody these principles that as you live your daily life. And you know, is there any Christians here? Well, I had another discussion. Someone said, okay, preacher, and I said, well, you know, we are all preachers, we're all ministers, we are 
a priesthood of believers. Uh, they were talking about something. They said, well, Doc, you go ahead and, 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 and you share the message. I said, no, all of us. And in matter of fact, all of you have been preaching anyway. You know, every day you preach a sermon. You know, your sermon is not only preached with words, but it's in your behavior and deeds. Albert John demonstrated these things. Albert John loved his wife, Vernell, and his sons. He was so good at it that each of his sons felt a special connection to him. Albert Jr., Glenn, Keith, Ronald, Carl, and Gary Anthony. You see, in providing, protecting, leading, teaching, helping, encouraging, and being a friend, you create. You create a human being. You bring life. You father. I pray that father is a positive image for you. I'm blessed to have had a great father, Albert John Williams, a man with an eighth grade education from Alabama, along with his wife, created musicians, teachers, schools administrators, an engineer, a computer networker, a medical doctor, a doctor of education, and a pastor preacher, and a doctor of theology, and a man that should have been a model. If you haven't guessed, Albert John Williams is my father. Though he's gone to heaven with his wife and my mother, Vernell, they live on through their children, grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. They live with the end in mind. They taught me to put my hands in the hand of the man who stilled the waters. They taught me to put my hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. They taught me to take a look at myself, and then I could look at others differently. Even though my father grew up doing before pre-civil rights movement, he always taught us that there's good in everybody. He said if there wasn't good in everybody, we would have just been annihilated. So don't take people for their color, take them for their character. My mother taught me how to pray. Before I reached the age of seven, I was down on my knees, and she made me, taught me how to sing a song. It was, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. You see, he's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. Everybody ought to know. So I challenge you to put your hand in the hand of the man who still the waters. Put your hand in the man of the man who calmed the sea. I challenge you to take a look at others differently. Take a look at yourself, and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. You see, one day I did that. It was this direction, this type of love that lifted me. Though I still have challenges ahead, I know love will lift me. You see, because love lifted me, and that's why I will trust in the Lord. That's why I will hold to his hands. And I challenge you today to build your hopes on things eternal and to hold to God's unchanging hand. The word of God for the people of God. Time for the offering. For those in the sanctuary, please remember to place your offering in one of the boxes as you exit. For those viewing and listening to worship, you may mail in or drop off your offering to our address, 33112 Grand River, Farmington, 48336. You may use PayPal, directing your offering to First United Methodist Church of Farmington. You may text your offering by texting FUMC GIVE to 44321 and follow the prompts. Let's pray. Father, it is our privilege to serve you with our tithes and offerings. Use them here in this community of faith, throughout this neighborhood, throughout this 
and throughout the world. Amen. Thank you, Bell Choir, for that wonderful reminder. Come by here, Lord. Come by here. Friends, we now turn our attention to an opportunity to join one another in the great gift that God offers us, this gift of prayer. There's much for us to celebrate, much for us to continue to be in prayer for. And so we lift up the Bucknell family, we lift up Angel Gibbery, we lift up the people of Turkey and Syria and Ukraine. We lift up Matthew and Nicholas Walter along with Sue Hartag, John Hopek and James and Juanita Landstra. We continue to celebrate the cancer-free status of Christina Suleiman as we now lift up those who are in need of God's healing touch. We lift up Kav Kathy Kovach, Paul King, Jim Amer and Mildred Tyson, along with Peter Calacayo, Diane Lynn, Ethel Shapiro, Jackie Brown, the Reverend Eric Stone, Martin Nadrowski, Monet Heath, Janice Cresswell, Karma Houston, Sue Jackson, Brian Lim, and Dave Evans. And we lift up those who are battling with different forms of cancer, including Michael Jackson, David Schultz, Don Gray, Carol Brands, Matthew Jones, Aiden McLaren, Daniel Maj, and Thomas Lee. 
as we lift up all those who are grieving and going through seasons of sorrow, including uh, Michael Waddell and family at the loss of his mother. We lift up the family of Priscilla Ito, Jim Hirsch, Edna Tyson, Betty Santer, Marlon Maskback, Jack Lansing I, Kay Wolf, William Smith, and all those who grieve as a result of tragic means, especially those who grieve as a result of mass shootings. Friends, I offer you now a moment of silent prayer for those names and situations that were given voice to, along with those that are on your hearts and minds as well. A moment of silent prayer. Come Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts this day. We'll yield ourselves to your will and to your way. Use us as your instruments of hope and blessing that those who cross our path might see the light of Christ shining in us and be drawn to relationship with the one who heals, who restores, who redeems, who reminds us that we are loved, that we are a blessing, that we should now go forth and bless others. Come Holy Spirit, challenge us and speak to our hearts this day to put aside our prioritization of our personal preferences in order to hear and heed your call to be ambassadors of grace and compassion. Speak to us this day as we lift those who are in need of your direction and guidance. For those who find themselves in frustrating and confusing circumstances, grant them peace. For those who simply need your word of direction as to which way they ought to go, open a window that no one can close and shut every door that's not for them. Speak to us, O oh God. Grant us your deliverance, that we might experience your wholeness and freedom, that there is no deficiency found in us, that we might continue the process of internal work that bears outward gift. We ask your blessing upon all those who are in need of your healing touch, whether they be in the sanctuary this day or in hospitals, rehabilitation facilities, rehab facilities. If they're at home, allow the pain to cease, that they might have a moment to give you glory, honor, and praise. And swiftly heal their mind and body. Allow them to heed the instructions of doctors and care professionals and for those who care and love them. And stretch out your comforting spirit on all those who grieve. For you know what it's like to lose and you know what it's like to be alone in those moments where the walls seem to be pressing in on us and the house seems too big and too quiet. Speak to us and allow us, your servants, to be your hands and feet of grace and comfort, that none should be alone, but all would be able to be comforted. Lord, we pray these things in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, who offers us this model prayer as a way of communing with you, our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Our closing hymn this day, friends, can be found on page 395 in the hymnal, Take Time to Be Holy. Number 395 in the hymnal, Take Time to Be Holy.
So friends, we come now to this time where we are to depart from this place, but never from God's presence, recognizing God's blessing with us as we go forth from this place. For indeed, you are a blessing from God. Now go be a blessing to someone else. Uh, Dr. Williams, we're going to allow you to uh, have a moment to uh, go to the back that people might greet you as they leave. <laughs> Just go to Doug. Doug will show you where you need to get. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it, it's not often I get to tell my friend what to do. <laughs> and he listens. <laughs> Awesome friends, feel free to go with the grace of God. For those of you who are celebrating your fathers with you, go in peace. For those of you who are celebrating your fathers in memory, may they be cherished and may they offer you comfort and grace. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you. Amen. <laughs>